I'm making a low-cost field railway as part of a much bigger project here, hoping to show you how easily this could be done. But now I need some wagons to run on it, and the first challenge is the wheels. These are the wheels I have for my little barn railway, which is very useful by the way. These are really for a seven and a quarter inch gauge track, so they're small and they just fall off my new railway. I can get away with using them in here only because these rails are concreted into place and they are fairly even and level. Now this is more of the correct size of wheel I need. It came out of a coal mine apparently. Obviously it's broken, but it's still useful to have a good look at it. This one was cast in molten iron, which would be a wonderful project to take on one day, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it's not something I can do just yet. Another way to make them would be to press them out of sheet steel, but again, that's not something easy to do without some heavy equipment. Obviously, if you have the money, you can just go and buy railway wheels, but they cost a lot of money. This one, for instance, cost nearly $500 for one wheel. I might need 50 wheels or more. Smaller wheels are cheaper of course, but for my railway they just wouldn't work. So as usual I've had a go at making my own. As you know, railway wheels need two particular things, treads and flanges. The treads sit on the rail and the flange stops the wheels sliding off sideways, both important. If your rails are even and level, you can get away with modest treads and modest flanges. But my railway might look more like this, so I'm going to need generous flanges to keep the wheels where they're supposed to be. Not only that, the flanges need to be flared out to cope with curves and points. If they were straight, like this early version I made, the flange would grind away on the top edge of the rail as it tried to negotiate a curve. It might even ride up out of the rails altogether, resulting in a horrible derailment in the donkey field that ends up all over the six o'clock news. With my higgledy-piggledy track and square-topped rails, my flares will need to be wider than 1970s polyester trousers. Another way of looking at all this is if you invest plenty of leeway in your wheel design then you can get away with far less maintenance on your tracks. The choice is yours. As part of my experiments I cut up the flanges on those early wheels of mine and knocked them out with a hammer. This was just an experiment to figure out what I needed to build properly. By the way, this is another reason why you shouldn't weld galvanized steel. Apart from the poisonous fumes, it drips globs of molten metal on everything. I'm showing you this to remind you to be careful. Be more careful than me, obviously. I should have ground off the zinc first, that's all, but I was just tacking the edges together for a speedy test run. Now with the fire out and the bodged up flare on the flange, I can try the wheels on the track again. It works so much better now, so these should be able to go around curves in the track and through the points too. You can't really tell though till you have all four wheels in position on a chassis of some sort. There's a lot more theory about wheels. The diameter and the wheelbase of them affects how they perform and often they are given a taper on the tread too, but perhaps that will do for now. All right then, so now we know what we need to build, how to actually build a wheel. They're complicated things. In the movie, The Great Escape, the prisoners made wheels for their underground railway using logs and coffee tins, which I think was pure genius. 
So, inspired by them, this is what I came up with. We need a short length of steel pipe, imagine this is steel pipe, to act as the tread, and then a couple of doughnut shapes welded in to act as the hub and the spokes. and then a flange welded on, and that way you could fit it onto an axle, and away you go. I wanted to make some like this in steel to show you, but I just couldn't find any pipe big enough. We really do live a long way from anywhere here. The biggest I could find was four inch pipe, and for my track I really need eight inch pipe at least. So I had to use my homemade slip roller to roll a pipe shape out of a long strip of steel. This is 3 mm thick so it's easy to roll and very satisfying, but it's probably not as round as a real pipe so I'm sure you could do better. The donut parts that fit into the pipe could be cut with an angle grinder. Just make sure the axle holes are in the middle. Obviously, thanks Tim, yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll have to forgive me for using my marvelous CNC machine for this, but I'd be silly not to, right? These could be solid circles with a hole in the middle if you were going to paint yours, but I might get these galvanized, so I need to add some holes to let the molten zinc out while they're being dipped. Watching this is strangely hypnotic, isn't it? Link to the machine in the description. Now, a flared flange is basically a cone shape, only a very short one. You can get free software that draws the shape you need, or you could just experiment. I could roll this too, but it's quicker just to hit it with a hammer. In fact, my first drawing was a little off. It ended up six millimeters too short, so I welded in a bolt to make it the right length. I've tack welded it together for now so I can test them. I know they look fairly lightweight, but the way they're constructed as a box makes them as strong as they could be. Which brings us to another important thing to consider. How strong do your wheels need to be? How much weight will they be carrying? Are you going to be moving bunches of flowers around? Or a couple of small children maybe? Or heavy loads of logs or stones? That's going to affect your wheel design and construction. Wheels and bearings are going to be the most expensive part of your wagons by far but there's no need to spend more than you need. 
I appreciate that these wheels are fairly complicated to make, especially if you're cutting out the shapes with an angle grinder, but at least it's possible. With a bit of practice, I guess they take half an hour each to make. If you're interested in the drawings, I'll make them available. I don't know how much weight these will take. A lot depends on the bearings too, but the bearings I ordered haven't arrived yet, so I can't show you the finished wagon yet. But in the meantime, I made a temporary frame so we could at least see how they run on the tracks. Not bad at all. I'm quite pleased with these. And it would need some hefty bumps in the track before these derail. I hope one day to experiment with other ways to make wheels, casting them or pressing them maybe. Just happily experimenting within the limits of my workshop and my skills. But feel free to let me know if you have a better idea. Next time I'm going to look at bearings for these wheels, which is another really interesting subject I'm learning a lot about. In fact, it's all so interesting and exciting. How lucky I am.